Stony Brook University is a remarkable story. Um, it arose from a bold vision, as you know. SUNY would create a research university that would rival the best public universities in the world. In its very short lifetime of, of a little more than 50 years, Stony Brook has fulfilled much of that promise, reaching the top 1% of research universities in the world. More than 24,000 students and 1,900 faculty study and work in three colleges and eight schools across three campuses and international sites in Kenya and Madagascar and beyond. Stony Brook University faculty, students, and staff are at the heart of a wide-ranging and cutting-edge research effort with expenditures of more than $170 million annually. Stony Brook Medical Center brings the benefits of medical research and the latest advances in diagnostics and therapeutics to advance the health of the residents of Long Island and beyond. And through the collective effort of its innovative faculty and research, as well as the sheer scope of its operations, Stony Brook has become a critical economic driver for the region, um, bringing responsible for more than $4.65 billion annually in extra dollars to the economy of the region, as well as responsible for nearly 60,000 jobs. Simply put, this is a success story. And the students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends, and of course the SUNY system, um, should be very proud of this institution and all you have accomplished. But of course for me, this is the starting point, um, the baseline for where we want to go next. From almost every member of the search committee and from many of the faculty members who have sent me messages of congratulations and welcome, I heard slightly different variations of the same thing. Um, we are very good. Um, we have come a long way, but we aspire to more. We believe there's untapped potential here. We want to be great. We want to see Stony Brook taking its place among the elite public universities in the AAU, fulfilling its founding mission. This is a bold and ambitious goal. But even in the midst of our current economic crisis, I embrace it. I think there are many reasons to believe that we can do this. For the first time since the post Sputnik era in 1957, coincidentally around the time Stony Brook was formed, our president and leaders in Congress appear to be fully committed to investing in science and education as a fundamental component of America's competitiveness and economic well-being. As many of you may know, President Obama's um, declaration at the National Academy of Sciences meeting last week that at least 3% of the gross domestic product, GDP, will go towards research and development, that the NSF, the National Science Foundation budget, will be doubled. Those items coupled with the remarkable commitment to education and research within the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the stimulus package, really completely changes the landscape. Stony Brook University faculty and their colleagues at Brookhaven National Laboratory and Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, with their collective strength in physics, mathematics, biology, computational sciences, neurosciences, are well positioned to play a key role in this scientific renaissance. If we work together, uh, if we integrate our strategic planning, find ways to share instead of duplicating expensive resources, and work together to jointly recruit scientists so we complement each other's strength, we can create a research consortium that will be highly competitive in this new environment. I will be reaching out to Sam Aronson, the director of Brookhaven National Laboratory, and Bruce Stillman, the president of Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory, to work together to implement a new level of collaboration that will benefit us all. The president's commitment to education in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, the cult called STEM proposals, at all grade levels is wonderful news for us as well. I anticipate that Stony Brook students and faculty will play a key role in implementing these initiatives, and we will be ready to continue the education of a new generation of scientists, engineers, and mathematicians. We want to be the destination for some of the best students in these disciplines, and we'll work to develop scholarship programs to help us attract these students. It's not just the national scene that fuels my optimism. As I mentioned previously, the appointment of Nancy Zimfer to the chancellorship of the SUNY system gives us a leader that knows how to build a great university and that will work effectively and indefatigably to help the SUNY system be great. I want to work with her and the leader of the other SUNY institutions to find more ways to collaborate and leverage the size and strength of our system. This may be particularly for true for alliances in the healthcare arena, where size matters for competitiveness in clinical research, effectiveness in outcome studies, and developing a new information infrastructure. 
There are going to be many opportunities in these areas, and I look forward to working with our fellow medical centers and institutions to compete effectively. And one of the things that makes me so confident about our future and gives me such a sense of optimism is the fact that Stony Brook University has many wise and generous friends who are committed to helping us reach those goals. I know they're going to be available for wise counsel and support and that they share our vision and will aid us in every step of the way. And to those who are in the audience, I thank you for your support and commitment to Stony Brook University.